Victoria's Secret introduces Angels 2000. The bra of the future is here today. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? I believe in miracles. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Everybody knows what the Victoria's Secret brand means. Les Wexner thought that he was a god. Victoria's Secret put girls on the map. Every celebrity wanted to be part of that show. Business was so good. Victoria's Secret made fortunes on young bodies. It wasn't about the clothes. It was models fulfilling this idea of fantasy. There was something else going on. There are a number of red flags. The modeling industry have people who allow bad things to happen. Did Les Wexner know about that? And there's this huge mystery. People had mentioned his name. And part of the mystery was Jeffrey Epstein. What Wexner did was unthinkable, giving him power of attorney. But there's a larger picture here. Politicians, royalty, intelligence agencies. Why was Epstein doing this? Was this about power and blackmail? I wonder how many more layers there are to this world. This is all a story that was meant to stay hidden. Victoria's Secret, a global lingerie empire that has dominated women's panties for two decades. Nothing represents Victoria's Secret brand better than its angels. Skinny, tan, sexy, beautiful models. Every year, beautiful teenage girls that are willing to do anything for their careers are recruited from every continent to walk the runway in seductive lingerie. What could possibly go wrong, right? Well, the owner of Victoria's Secret? Lex Wesner had a very close relationship with the greatest sex trafficker in human history, Jeffrey Epstein. But more on that later. Wexner is a genius. It's impossible to walk through a mall and not pass at least one store owned by Les Wexner. Bath and Body Works, Abercrombie & Finch, and best of the bunch, Victoria's Secret. That's because Wexner understood a key principle. If you sell to the masses, you travel with the classes. In other words, if you sell to the common folk, you become one of the kings. So he made sure he sold clothes for the masses. And it worked. By the early 1990s, Victoria's Secret had become the largest lingerie retailer in the US, with 350 stores nationally and sales topping $1 billion. But you can't just sell everyday items like bras and underwears in a market saturated with other competitors and expect to make a lot of money. It's like trying to sell milk and bread and hoping to make billions. So how did Wexner do it? Well, Victoria's Secret was actually founded by Roy Raymond in the 1980s. Victoria's Secret, a company started by Roy Raymond because he was embarrassed in stores buying lingerie for his wife thought other men feeling the same would rather buy by catalog. So, panties, bras, camisoles, and corsets in fine French silk. Raymond sold his company to Les Wexner, at which point it was on the verge of bankruptcy. To turn Victoria's Secret's fortunes around and make it into the billion dollar company that it is, Wexner created a fantasy a story. He focused on the shopping experience rather than the product. Les had read a book written by the famous director Sidney Lumet called Making Movie and he realized that you need to set a narrative about your brand that you can use as not only your inspirational mechanism but also as your control mechanism. So he invented a story about the mythical founder of the brand and her name was of course Victoria. I am Victoria Stewart White. This spring I shall turn 36 years old. Father taught me about business, but mother was determined that I develop my soul, my passion, and my femininity. Mother was passionate, a fiery French woman with a quick temper and a healthy disrespect for the English and their stodgy ways. 
she used to tease father about everything. We know that the media tries to control the masses by setting narrative. That's what people follow. The narrative set by the media has a powerful impact on our shopping habits and our behaviors. Just like in the movie The Matrix, everyone apart from Neo is trapped in the illusion created by AI. The narrative set by Wexner was so powerful that it is said that when a new young assistant joined Victoria's Secret in the early days, she asked, when will we get to meet Victoria? The narrative that has been set makes you feel as if you're not buying that overpriced bra, but actually buying into the fantasy. Wexner got this idea from Ralph Lauren. Our mental model in building the Victoria's Secret brand is Ralph Lauren. Today, if you talk about Ralph Lauren to men or to women virtually of any age, everybody knows what that brand means. Uh, I would venture to say with all of us in the room, have a very clear sense of the personality of that brand. It's vivid in your mind. We wanted to make it certain that every time they came in that store, they were going to see some novelty where the store felt like it was brand new and fresh. And this is how Lex Wesner invented fast fashion. He's the guy who figured out how to make Americans shop, shop, shop. Just the same way Jeff Bezos revolutionized shopping. But how did a successful billionaire genius get associated with the greatest sex trafficker in human history? In the 80s, Wexner was running his successful company out of the middle of Ohio which compared to New York felt like the middle of nowhere. Ohio was also far away from the movers and shakers and the social scene of New York back in the 80s. So Wexner moves to New York and has the advantage of being astonishingly rich, but he does not have New York's cachet. So he almost immediately thereafter ends up buying Henry Bendow, which at the time was the place where the world's most influential women end up shopping. This was a way for Wexner to get the respect with New York society in high fashion New York. But Wexner still has a problem. He cannot dominate New York society the way he can in Columbus. So here he wants someone who can hold his hand and guide him into the right rooms and the right charities and the right parties. This is how Epstein wormed his way into Wexner's life. Jeffrey Epstein had this trait of worming his way into the lives of older, successful, influential Jewish men. Epstein was extraordinarily mesmerizing and could convince anything of anybody, the master manipulator. When Les Wexner met Jeffrey Epstein, he Henry remarked that Jeffrey Epstein was so exciting that Epstein was everything that Les Wexner thought was lacking in Ohio. After Epstein had managed to navigate his way into Wexner's life, Wexner granted full power of attorney to Epstein and gave him unmedicated control over all his assets, 20 of Wexner's companies, 19 trusts and different charitable foundations. He was able to manage his real estate, he managed his investments, he managed his businesses, he could borrow money under his name, he could sign his checks. There wasn't a part of Wexner's empire that Epstein didn't have access to and didn't have some ability to control. Epstein took full advantage of this power. And in the 1990s, Epstein started telling young, sometimes underage girls that he was a recruiter for Victoria's Secret and he could easily get them a modeling gig, even though he couldn't. Epstein was at the first ever fashion show and he even eventually found himself sitting near Wexner at one of the later fashion shows. It was something that he was able to use much to his advantage, certainly in his early years of predation as a kind of calling card that got him introductions where he wanted. One of those women was Alicia Arden. In 1997, in a hotel room in California, Alicia was invited for a business meeting by Epstein, where they could discuss the possibility of her being in the Victoria's Secret catalog. But when she met Epstein, he grabbed her and tried to undress her. When she protested, he gave her a hundred dollars. <laughs> I called my friend multiple times. He didn't expect that I had to be in a bra and underwear in front of him in the hotel room, and he did give me $100 cash as well. And by that time, when he was touching my butt, I felt like such a prostitute that I put the $100 back on the table, and then he thought that I was like, why are you Following the incident, Alicia filed a police report. So some questions that arise from this is, did Victoria's Secret ever know that a police report was filed against Epstein by Alicia? Was Epstein ever asked about this incident? 
and did Les Wexner know about this? Epstein also assaulted Maria Farmer. Maria was working at Les Wexner's home when it happened. He tried to run away and call law enforcement. But Les Wexner's security staff refused to let her leave for 12 hours. Maria also accused Les Wexner's wife Abigail of acquiescence. So it seems like that Wexner had Epstein's back. And what's even more interesting is that even after all this, Les went on to praise Epstein, calling him very smart, with excellent judgment and unusually high standards, and finished by describing him as a most loyal friend. And this is the stuff we know Epstein has done with Victoria's Secret, but why? Why would a genius self-made billionaire like Wexner give Epstein, who he barely knew, so much power? Did Epstein have dirt on Wexner? Or did Les Wexner share in Epstein's interest? No. In any event, uh, you did develop a sexual relationship with Leslie Wexner at some point in time. Is that true? No. When Epstein was first arrested in 2006, it was Victoria's Secret that directly aided Epstein's legal defense. What's also interesting is that when Epstein was arrested a second time, news broke out about how Epstein had stolen tens of millions of dollars from Wexner. Here, Jeffrey Epstein mismanaged tens of millions of and Les is a man who is known to be quite litigious. He did not choose to pursue legal action against Epstein. I wonder why. Why would anyone choose to let a man walk free who conned you out of tens of millions of dollars? Good morning, this is an NBC News special report. NBC News has learned that disgraced financier Jeffrey Epstein is dead. Epstein took his own life while he was behind bars here in- The wound is down here. You'd think if somebody hung themselves, the wound would be maybe up here. Yes. Most hangings, the ligature slides up to beneath the, the uh, jawbone, the mandible. Here it's in the middle of the neck. And to add to it, there was a total breakdown in security. The video cameras didn't work, the guards went to sleep. Wall Street power broker Leon Black is stepping down as CEO of the giant investment there, dives into FC's relationship with billionaire hedge fund manager Glenn Dubin. Barclays CEO Jess Daly is stepping down this following an investigation. Britain's Prince Andrew says he is appalled by recent sex abuse claims about his former friend. Former President Bill Clinton reportedly took more than two dozen trips on Epstein's private jet. Mercy also put a spotlight on President Trump's relationship with Epstein. Questions are swirling around the state of Bill and Melinda Gates' marriage. One source of concern for Melinda was Bill's dealings with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Is there a lesson for you or Anyone else looking looking at this? Well, he's dead. So, uh, you know, in general, you always have to be careful. Uh, 